Hey, I'm Casey Foran. I'm about to have a sit-down interview with the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference Commissioner, Mr. Steve Martin. He has had an exceptional five years since he joined the conference in 2014, and we're looking forward to seeing what he has in store for the next five years. Let's go see. Anniversary as the Commissioner of the GCAC Conference. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, and thanks for coming out and spending a little time with me interviewing. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, as you're celebrating your fifth year anniversary, I really want to know what are you most proud of as far as your teams, the colleges, um, the players, the coaches? What's the most proudest thing about this conference? Well, I'll tell you, when I look back five years ago, I knew we had a lot of work to do uh, as it relates to the conference. But as we have progressed along and we set some goals and uh, you know, we put a strategic plan into place, but what I'm most proud of, I'm most proud that we continue to have student athletes, both men and women, that graduate from our institutions. That's what's most important to me. See, that, that was instilled in me when I was in college. At Georgetown. I, at Georgetown, because I played for John Thompson, and he truly believed in getting an education. He had a 98 percentage graduation rate. And I always thought that was extremely important. So as I took on this role, we constantly talked to the college presidents, the athletic directors, coaches, about the experience off the court in the classrooms. So when I look at the uh, commissioner's honor roll and see the number of student athletes that are on the honor roll, that's what makes me most proud. So when I look at all the things that we have accomplished a lot, it's those types of things that you base academics that makes me most proud. Awesome. So when you took this role in 2014, uh, the, your predecessor had been here since the 80s. Mm -hmm. So there were some um, some things that needed to be approved mm -hmm. uh, and some things that needed to be upgraded. Um, at, the, at that point, you guys were kind of losing teams to other mm -hmm. conferences. Uh, you set out with your five-year strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Talk about some of the things that were in that plan that you wanted to accomplish. Well, you know, looking at when I first came into this position, I knew we had a lot of work to do. Uh, we had different priorities prior to when I took on the role. So when I took on the role, the priorities became, one, stability for the conference. You're absolutely right. We had schools that were leaving us for whatever reason. And, you know, we had to kind of stop the bleeding, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we had to spend some time talking to all the presidents about you know, needing schools that wanted to stay to stay. And then we had to put forward a plan to really look at how we bring in new schools. So that was one of the first priorities uh, in the uh, strategic plan. How do we get stability and how do we uh, bring on new members? Also, the stability piece came in. We had a lot of turnover, we had a lot of turnover with our athletic directors. We had some athletic directors who had multiple roles. And that's very difficult. If you are a head basketball coach and trying to take on the role of the athletic director, it becomes very difficult to do both well. So one of the things I went to the presidents and I asked that we really take a look at the role of athletic directors and let's make that a full-time, full responsibility of the athletic director's role, not having dual roles. So now, of our eight schools, we actually only have one coach that has a dual role of athletic director and right. coach. Everybody else has just athletic director's roles and responsibilities. Now that was very important because when you have people that can really focus on what it takes to develop your athletic program overall, that helps and you're not really focus on 10 different things. Mm -hmm. So also, looking at the strategic plan, we talked about how do we grow the conference, how do we add new schools. We we're very fortunate that we added a new member in Russ. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we still have a ways to go. We would like to get that number to 10, maybe 12 schools. Then we looked at revenue sharing. Well, not revenue sharing, but just revenue generation, period. How do we go out and generate new revenues for the conference? So we took on looking for you know, potential sponsors. We were very fortunate to, to mm -hmm. form this relationship with Adidas. Mm -hmm. It's a conference-wide relationship where all of our schools are involved with Adidas, Adidas Apparel. And then we went on and we, we looked at other potential sponsors and we, uh, we formulated a uh, relationship with the Winton Hotels. So those are our two national and kind of international global sponsors. Mm -hmm. And then we have some local sponsors that we're involved in. Now the plan for us is to continue, obviously, to add on new corporate sponsors. And then once we took on you know, the sponsorship piece, 
then we just started to take a look at other areas of the conference. How do we make our experience for our student athletes better? Meaning when we have a conference championship or a conference tournament, we just don't want the student athletes to come and play the game. We want a full experience. Okay, come and have fun. So when we talk about coming out, come to the banquet, come to the banquet and have fun. Any other activity that we try to build around the conference tournament, it's about the experience for the uh, student athletes. Right. And then we added one of my favorite subjects, which is it's, it's really social media, live streaming, all of those elements. I knew that's what you were going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorites, yeah. So important because that gives us an opportunity to show our brand right. outside of the confounds of the college campuses and the gymnasiums. So we have taken on first trying to get all of our member institutions to do live streaming of their games. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we moved in that direction and right now the eight schools, six schools are doing live streaming, which was great because when I first started we had none. Right. And then we from a conference standpoint Last year was our first year that we actually live streamed the entire men's and women's basketball tournament. We had our digital crew, which included yourself, yeah. did, did a great job Thank you. on all the conference, uh, conference tournament games. Uh, and then we're looking at how we use social media. How do we get our message, our brand out with social media? With our schools and our student athletes and our students, how we engage them on social media so they can have fun. Again, it's, the, it's moving the experience off of the campus and out of the gymnasiums. So all of those elements really combined together was part of the five-year uh, the five-year strategic plan. Did you touch on too that the sports information directors mm -hmm. as well as how how they have mm -hmm. actually helped with branding and mm -hmm. pushing the, the conference forward mm -hmm. and. Right. using those elements of social media. And, and that's absolutely correct. The uh, uh, sports information directors, a huge asset to us because now we talk about how do we do social media campaigns. So when we're around, let's say, track and field, what do we do to get our message out about our track and field athletes and our track and field event? And then at the event itself, how do we do, utilize social media to really show behind the scenes of the activity activities that are going on on the spot at the moment. So our sports information directors have, been, have done a great job with connecting with one another in order for all of us to really leverage all of our social media assets together. What have you thought about the engagement from um, the coaches standpoint and how they've embraced some of these changes? Mm -hmm. Has it been a welcoming change or have they uh, kind of dove right in with you? Or, you know? Well, I tell you, with change, there's always a little resistance. Yeah. But also with change, it also brings an opportunity for others to give some input. Okay, so what I've experienced with our coaches as we have changed, they like to see more. Okay, even with our athletic directors, they have challenged me to do more as I challenged them to do more. So it's a good relationship. Uh, and that's the, those are the things that are going to make us better to continue to challenge each other. So when we also look at the coaching, the coaches, basketball, volleyball, track and field. You know, part of the plan also was how do we stabilize our coaches? Now, you know, in athletics, coaches, you know, they, they, their responsibility is to win games. Right. Okay? <laughs> so when you put all these other things on them, graduation, making sure your student athletes go to class, you know, sometimes, you know, they look at that with a little hesitancy with having to have all those additional responsibilities. So as I put those responsibilities on them to make sure that we're accomplishing the ultimate goal of the student athlete, which is to graduate, then obviously they like to put certain things on me also. And, but it's only fair. So when I say that, things like, how do we manage a schedule where student athletes miss a minimum amount of classes? Okay, extremely important because it's difficult to put together a schedule to begin with, but how do you take things in consideration so we minimize class, uh, missing classes. So when we look at the schedule, we know Edward Warriors and Philander Smith, they play, you know, they're located on the opposite spectrum. So mm -hmm. They have to travel the furthest. So we take things like that in consideration when we put together the schedule in their travel schedule. So coaches want to play a role. Coaches want to play a, a, a role in 
how we manage the basketball tournament, okay? And that's very important. We always get into the debate on, we know we're gonna have early games, we know we're gonna have late games. Who's gonna play the early games? Who's gonna play the late games? And also location. And also location. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes to have a home court advantage, yeah. okay? Those things are extremely important. Look. Because we're changing, because we're growing, I think because we're growing, going in the right direction, I get a lot of, I'd say, constructive criticism from coaches, athletic directors, and presidents. Uh, and that's good criticism because now they want to be involved. And, and that's good for me to be able to hear from a president. If a president has, you know, has an idea about how we should go about doing our voting for awards, then that's a good thing. Right. It's a really good thing. So, like I say, change has brought on more input from athletic directors, coaches, and other administrators. So, Steve, I know you're celebrating five years, but what's the next five years? Well, I see a very bright future for the GCAC within the next five years. So, what I see is GCAC building a digital network, a digital network where we are televising, I should say live streaming all of our games, and we're all connected, all the universities all connected along with the, uh, along with the conference office. So what we can do with GCAC game. Uh, along with that, I see the network having uh, a show, okay. a weekly sports show, and not just on sports, but also on the academic achievements of our student athletes, on the community involvement of our student athletes. So that would be a huge piece for us. But that network, that really building that digital network is, is something that we do very, very hard. And then I see when we look at our tournaments, I see adding elements and activities to our tournaments. So things that I take a look at, like our basketball tournament, we need to add a Greek show to our basketball tournament. We also need to add a cheer and dance team. <laughs> I didn't know he was good. Um, another thing, um, you know, I know you've been an, you were an executive with the NBA and helping brand the league locally, nationally, internationally. How does that play into some of these uh, ideas you're coming up with? How are you getting this, this uh, master plan developed in your head? <laughs> well, all of my prior experiences, being at Georgetown with Coach Thompson, working at the NBA with Commissioner Stern, working for the Experience were very important in terms of my development as an executive and also the development of my creative thinking. So, so I, I use it all the time. One thing that I contribute a lot to when I first started working at the NBA, I think we only had 20 employees. So that gave me, along with everybody else, an opportunity to work on all projects. So I had a wide range of experiences and interactions. background and knowledge and my experience to, you know, to, to really propel me to, you know, where I am today. And it's kind of interesting. When I started at the NBA, I always admired Commissioner Stern, and I said to myself, I want to be a commissioner, and I always thought I would be the commissioner of the NBA, <laughs> yeah. but I'm a commissioner. And I take all the experiences that I've had working with the NBA, playing at Georgetown, being affiliated with Coach Thompson, and really bring it all. And I know that you see 
TAC is grateful to have you on board and uh, looking forward to the continued success of what you guys bring to the table and congratulations and we'll see what's, what's next. Well, thank you. Uh, it has been, I, I would say, a really good five years and we're really looking forward to another really good five years as we continue to grow and get our brand and get our name out there and really make GCAC a part of the fabric of for the GCAC, I'm Casey Ferran here with the Commissioner, Mr. Steve Barton.